it's your girl Adiola. First of all, the world lost a visionary leader this week, a selfless man who was willing to make great sacrifices in the pursuit of freedom and justice, Nelson Mandela. May his soul rest in perfect peace. You know that till Mandela died, people all over the world were praying that he would live longer. I wonder if the same applies to uh, many of our leaders, you know, if people would actually pray for them to live long. <laughs> in fact, I know that uh, there are some Nigerians, I'm not the one telling you this. Week. You know that there are some Nigerians that are praying that certain people would die in plane crash. I said, ah, how can you be so wicked? In fact, I know some that are praying that uh, certain politicians would die of road accidents because they embezzled the money that they were supposed to use to fix the roads. Eh? Or that they would die of the same ailments and diseases that our hospitals are not equipped to fix. You know, I'm telling you, people are very wicked. Ah, how can you wish eh, that somebody would die? You know, I keep asking myself though, that why can't our present leaders be like Nelson Mandela? You know, I mean, I know nobody can be Mandela, but at least try. Eh? Why can't they genuinely put the interest of their people first? Just like Mandela, do you guys know that apart from fighting for freedom and equality in South Africa, Nelson Mandela introduced free health care for all children under the age of six. This man gave free health care for pregnant women and breastfeeding women. You know, he set up child maintenance grants so that parents can get certain amount of money from the government every month for each child. He increased pension for the old people. He introduced better housing for the poor and the less privileged. He ensured equal education opportunities. And that is just to name a few. Eh? <laughs> um, he did all that in one time by the way <coughs> uh, my press you know just so you we are clear on that he did all that in one time <laughs> in one time yes and then he handed over successfully you know i'm not saying that he fixed all of south africa's problem but at least he genuinely served his people but for some reason you know nowadays we africans we like to excuse our leaders of today eh? and we know they're not doing what they should be doing oh. uh, <laughs> excuse me people huh? how are you today hey, doctor. So what are you doing here? Why are you so dressed I up? Forgot? Yeah, yeah, what 100 episodes of keeping it oh real. Oh my god, yeah. How can you, you guys say yeah, you didn't even remind me? Ah, that is you true. Oh, yes. today, that's today. Yeah, other episodes. So, we thank God. So forget about this crap. God, let's eh? go, let's go, let's go. We Where are we going? The stop? party outside. There are a lot of people are there waiting for you. There is a party oh, outside. Me. I'm just getting started. I have uh, not talked about the widow uh, of a uh, dose. Forget, forget the crap. Forget the government show money. I have a long list. Next week, you talk. Forget about this crap. Today, we are going to talk about you. People want to know the you in you. You don't want to talk about No, no, It's very boring. No, no, I, I no, no. Uh, they funny. want to know the you and you behind the scene. Uh, let's funny. go, let's go, let's say. go. Uh, and <laughs> remember, talk about it. there it's is carrot funny. cake over there. Wait, there is carrot cake. Carrot cake, and there are some hungry women Are there. you serious? Oh, seriously. There's carrot cake. Yeah, big one. I'm sorry, guys. I want to stay, <laughs> yeah. but next he week just she, said there is carrot next cake. Next week, she will be back. Don't worry about it. <laughs> it's carrot cake. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> let's go. We are marking the 100 episode of uh, Keeping It Real and it's an honor for me to share the stage. So how do you feel about reaching this, this um, hallmark? I didn't think I would get to 100 when I started. <laughs> Getting to 100 was not my goal. When I started, the goal was just to get through each week. How did you actually come up with this idea of Keeping It Real? There was a lady that was doing the news and then she had to go back to Ghana and my boss asked me if I wanted to step in doing the news and I said of course I'll do the news if I can do it my own way some Nigerians are becoming too bold eh? some of you you are becoming too bold you get liver why are you insulting my first lady now hey can you imagine I wanted to do news at the same time I wanted to entertain people so I did the first episode after everybody had left <laughs> I showed the first episode and I put it on YouTube and then I sent the link to my boss and everybody else and people said they loved it and surprisingly they were expecting episode 2 and then after episode 2 they were expecting episode 3 and I'm like, are you serious? So uh, how is the process like? The process of picking stories that you are going to uh, uh, feature in the, on the show. From the beginning of the week, I'm constantly looking out for stories to talk about from different African countries, not just Nigeria. And then by like Monday and Tuesday, I'm doing research and I write the script. So I shoot like on Tuesday or Wednesday and then I edit till 
Saturday. So how has the reaction been from viewers? It's uh, mixed. I get a lot of positive reactions as well as negative, you know, <laughs> depending on whether you like what I'm talking about. But I think it's important to talk about these things. Um, I think that Nigeria is at that point where young people have to speak up about their country. It's, it doesn't just belong to these old men that are vandalizing our resources. It belongs to us too. I'm a Nigerian. Nigeria belongs to me. I have a right to talk about what I want in my country. It doesn't matter whether somebody likes what I'm doing or not. These are issues that need to be addressed. Let's talk about something that is very controversial. That is when you sing. Is that supposed to be singing? <laughs> what is that? Is no. One heart. <laughs> so, um, you you, you, see, you see, keep insisting that that drink. you are going to keep singing, and <laughs> some some of your fans are saying. And so, I heard that you're recording an album. Is that a, a kind of punishment to your fans? <laughs> Including me, because you know how I feel about you singing around the office here. By, by the way, guys, whenever I start singing in the office, this man would come out and say yes. But she continues, and she's about to drop, an album is about to drop. The version. The singing on Keeping It Real, first of all, you know that Keeping It Real is a character. What? No, you? Get out. The singing on Keeping It Real is, is just to make people laugh. Seriously, Rudolph, do I sing like that when I'm out of <laughs> <laughs> I may, I may actually surprise you someday. With an album? With a single at least. Ooh, ooh, that's that's <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> Whatever. I couldn't even lie with a straight face. But um really you know, you're not looking forward I'm looking forward to I'll buy, I'll buy, you know, because my table at home is shaky, so I can use it to support the table, you know what I mean? There's no way I can I cannot ask you this question. Your dream appears to be uh, to be the first lady and today you look like a first lady. So um how do you hope to get to that point? Why not aim to be the president? You do know that that's just part of the show, right? Seriously? You don't want to be the first you lady? Don't, you don't just become the first lady. You marry the president to become the first lady. That's just part of the show, don't you get it? Oh, it's to make okay. people, you know... So it means that color is not real. Nobody Excuse hears. Excuse me. Anyway, Kole, I overheard that your conversation with uh, Dr. Damages. Yes, yes, today. I was waiting for this show to be over. You and I, we have something to talk about. Eh? You were telling Damages that I'm too picky. I try not to talk about Kole because He's a very private person. He likes privacy a lot. So, I mean, I've begged him a few times to show his face so people can see him. But he tells me that I should remember that what he's doing is dangerous, like all those pictures that he's showing and stuff like that. So, he refuses to show his face. Seriously, what is, the, 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 what is real and what is fake about your show? Do you go out of character? certain point you don't expect me to be acting all crazy <laughs> uh, <laughs> people who know off. her here is she <laughs> um keeping it real is a character i it's easier now for me to get in character but i remember when i first started like let's say an hour before i start to shoot i'll start trying to get in character mm. and i remember after the first episode and everybody saw that they couldn't believe that I do that and <clears throat> for the second episode everybody wanted to be in the studio when I was shooting do you remember and then after going over like three sentences I had to tell everybody to leave because I couldn't do it when people were there like I was just too conscious of the fact that people are watching me so I couldn't do that second episode but when everybody left I went back to, I look at the camera and I call the camera like a name of my friend. I can say, Ungozi, hmm, have you heard about what happened? <laughs> like suddenly, I'm not seeing the camera anymore. 
I'm looking at Ungozi. And so long as I'm saying Ungozi, I can talk to Ungozi however I like because me and Ungozi we are close, you know. We are like this. Now, I, I noticed that you have a lot of followers uh, across Africa, Ethiopia and other African countries, and you address their issues. Do they get back to you and say what they think about what you are you're saying? Actually, they do. And I'm getting a lot of um, response from Ethiopians. People telling me they are very happy that I'm talking about what's going on in their country. The episodes with the most views are when I talk about what's going on in Ethiopia. But I'm also getting a lot of, oh, you need to shut up. You don't know what you're talking about. What about Your the government? I wouldn't say that directly from the government, but definitely pro-government people. I've had from pro-government people from Eritrea, pro-government people from Ethiopia, definitely pro-government people from Nigeria. How do you classify your encounter with President Obama? Oh, sorry. President Jonathan. One day, one day I will be able to answer that. <laughs> no, your encounter with President Jonathan. We're working very hard on that. We're yeah, working how very exactly, hard. sir? We are working very hard. And 3,000 people have died. I think just for clarification to all the people that are saying, oh, what is she doing there? I'm actually a journalist. <laughs> and I had the UN press pass that day, and I was cleared by the security for those that are saying that, oh, uh, security men should just handle her well. And also, every president, after they are done at the UN, normally would sit down with the press members from their countries for an interview. So I had the right to interview him there that day. Other journalists were also outside hoping to interview whoever they could get. So it's not out of the ordinary that I interviewed Mr. Jonathan. To me, I was just doing my job. Mm. And that encounter tells me that a lot of people that are working for the president are actually the ones behind the hype. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Because the president actually did not push me. He was talking to me. How could the president push you? <laughs> that would have been the Well, disaster. at least he didn't say that yeah, he's not should. doing an interview and he didn't command anybody to, to push do. me. I think it's the people around him that are actually behind most of the hype. I get emails that were supposed to be for you. Uh, people write me and say, how am I going to reach Adela? I want to propose to her. I want to marry her. Oh, um, that's so cute. Give me tips. What, what do you think I should tell them? You know, because there are many that are really trying to. Well, I don't know what happens in your email, uh -huh. whether you respond to their emails or not. But they come to me and say, please help us. And they ask you for tips. Yeah, right? tips on how so to. So then you give them tips. No, but now can you help them? Because I, I can't respond to everybody. There are a lot. I'm sorry, they send the email to you. <laughs> That's not my problem. So I have the best husband in the world. The most loving, caring uh, and encouraging. You are, frust you are frustrating some of our viewers who are hopeful. No, you asked. Without, without my husband, I can't do what I'm oh. doing. So, Why did I go into this direction? This is to him, he is watching me. I love you, baby. You go out and people recognize you. How do you feel about that? How do you I go out and people recognize Yeah, in, in public, me. yeah. People know you as a lady. It doesn't mean anything. I mean I recognize people too. <laughs> last week, last week, no, seriously, two weeks ago I was in a library and, and somebody came to me and said, I know you from a TV show. And, Good. and and I, I said, where? I tried to pretend. He said, I know you, Sarah reporters. How are you taking that in? Are you surprised that people are um, watching all over? I don't know. I think that if you're doing something like what we're doing, it's inevitable. And that scares me because um, I'm doing a, a dangerous job. <laughs> but I would say, though, that I, more than anything else, I appreciate everyone every individual that watches my show every every one of them i don't think i would i would have gone this far without those people telling me how much they enjoy the show i want to thank god so much for the grace every week to come up with something and to make it funny but in america when you get to one episode of any show it means that you can go into syndication that's so true. It's, it's a big, it's a big thing. It, it yeah. is a big thing, and I'm definitely going into syndication just so that my boss can hear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but and it also means that you are rich. Well, I'm counting on it someday. 
<laughs> no, but, but that's what it is. 100 episode of any show on TV. Do you think you can um, eventually transition to be on NTA? On, on, on you know, I would really TV? love if the shows can get on Nigerian TV stations. So recently, you've kind of uh, moved towards um, what I call advocacy, where you ask people to sign, sign petitions, petitions and, and things like that. Do you think that, that, did you notice any change in terms of the expectations of your viewers? I just don't want to talk. I want people to actually take actions. I feel like when my viewers actually do something about what they've heard, then it goes beyond just hearing it for the sake of knowing what's the latest news. It goes to caring personally. I guess that's the goal. I'm trying to get people to care. You know, I wanted to talk about the Edo State widow. If someone had not taken that video and put it online, nobody would have known. I mean, that happens all the time. That widow is not the only widow in Edo State mistreated mm. by officials, you know. So it's not just for people to go out and protest. It's also for people to use technology to put things out there. Uh, for, for example, I asked people to do like an episode of Keeping It Real. I was really amazed about some things that people talked about and hopefully it gives them the understanding that I also have a voice. I don't know whether he's dead or alive. Who's I don't know whether he's dead or alive. You know, journalists will live in no more than us because you know how to. You know, some of you always talk to them. Hold on, hold on, Mr. President. What you mean journalists know more about Boko Haram? If not for that, my brother, how you talk to man like that? Man do fiham, job, man report, nah mean man work with terrorists. Cha, 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 no, no, no. I'm just, I'm a little upset about that. Let me ask you, what is the greatest misconception that people have about you? Because about they watch me? you on Keeping It Real. I guess the greatest misconce misconception is, oh, she's some... Um, some girl from Ibadan are, are you not to, from Ibadan? That used to sell orange or something. <laughs> yeah, what were you? Oh, okay, you were selling a ube pier. What were you selling? <laughs> yeah. This is good. Ah, well, you can learn a lesson from these boys. Someday that will be you. If you do well, you get what I'm saying. This was off. It's original one. Yes. Ah. Mm. Pass the ball, pass the ball, uh, pass the ball. Hey, your tomorrow will know. Egwe, 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 joy, 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 joy. Wow. Ah, we paid now. We paid for the airline ticket. You want us to donate forty pounds now? Four one nine for London. Ah, me, I know the pay. I know the pay anything. <laughs> it's part of the plan, though. I wanted it to look as if some girl from nowhere i want it to look like a bush girl that is concerned about her country and talking about her country bush girl that wears expensive clothes well that's that comes with a job oh yeah can't can help it yeah. just to make it funny you know? there's <laughs> a new law in the nigerian senate that oh yeah I that wanted will, to talk about that, that. Will you can actually, go to seven you, years in prison you are on you. the list so how are you <laughs> Are you prepared? You have five million naira to to survive I've been to pay. For you, you you are you are you're finished. I'm, I'm praying for you. You're finished. So <laughs> anyway, yeah, but that is the most ridiculous news I've ever ever seen in my life. Is it going to influence what you do? Are you going to like? If anything, be careful? I think that would irritate more people and make more people do stops like i'm doing when i saw that i was really pissed off you think so. color will still be here tomorrow for the shooting <sighs> of the you know, <laughs> i it can never speak for color he's very he's, he's because he might be afraid of that, that he's, he's a mysterious years. person and he's very mysterious as well mm. like just to, like like the way i don't know what picture he will put up next you never know what he would do next mm. so we'll see what happens he all right thank you so much and Oh, All the best. Down. Thank you. Another 100 episode. Sure. <laughs> Oh well, there you have it, the hot seat with Rudolph Okonko. So well to all the participants in the competition, thank you so much for taking the time. I really appreciate you guys. It was a very difficult decision and a panel of judges had to help me out as well as the people who voted. So as I'm concerned though, all the participants are winners. The first prize goes to Christy, a Congolese viewer. Oh my god, she went all out, the opening dance, everything, the background, I'm like, what? <laughs> Why are you putting this in French? Am I speaking French? 
We are talking in English. Please call it. Put it back in English. I, I, do you hear bonjour here? The, we are speaking in in English now. Ah, call it. I'm watching you. Are there some Congolese brother or sister in the house? No, seriously, she put in so much work and I really appreciate that. And the second prize goes to keeping a real weight and aboki that is Shewu Jakubu. Hello, my people. It's your boy, Jari. <laughs> it's your boy, Malam Shewu. <laughs> Don't worry <bother over. laughs> Today we are on a show, keeping it real with an aboki. You know when last my son Hassan did birthday? Eh, we just put some rice and Coca-Cola chicken. What is billions of Nara birthday party? Shout out to all my guys in Zamfara, in Vorno, in Kassina, in Kano. Eh, <laughs> to Ella, <laughs> I love that, sir. It totally made my day. The guy was so funny. Thank you so much for participating. And the third prize goes to Miss Odonola Aderomu in Canada. She was very passionate, you know, yet she didn't forget to pick on Koledowo. Actually, every one of them picked on Koledowo. No, 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 Kwale, the way did I tell you to show anything? Eh? Don't put me in trouble before people will start saying that I am criticizing our president because he has a PhD. Yes, and the fourth prize goes to Princess Lex Onaniwu from Malaysia. Everyone forgot about my karate skills, but she did not forget. You know, she remembered. Eh? And her song was the bomb. Yeah, all of you that are contesting with me from Malaysia and other places, okay? <laughs> Bring up your Jack in San style. Oh yeah, let's fight. You, eh, eh. I said, no, 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 no. Jack in San style will not work. Let me just sing for her. And I said, what do I know? I'm just keeping it real. But I will sing for her. Adio. I want to win this $500. And the fifth prize goes to Johnny Be Good. He was so funny talking about electricity. <laughs> You know why I'm laughing? <laughs> Never. <laughs> they said they will supply us electricity, that they're going on strike to protest one thing, one thing. <laughs> you know why I'm laughing? It's very funny because we can't tell the difference. <laughs> made me laugh and i like to give special mention to toby adesanya i love her energy i wish i have more prices seriously i really really enjoyed her presentation as well as kinky mass who turned off the lights so we can get his point about electricity as well as biker to biker who had a wonderful slideshow on why president jonathan is the jesus of otuoke <laughs> and i wish he showed his face though you know so everybody did really well as soon as you send your address i'll be sending out the prices and everybody else gets the t shirt that says keeping it real with adiola all right guys thank you so much for watching this episode of keeping it real it's been real and i'm keeping it real right up in here until next week and we'll see y'all later peace out